recorded a TED style event in focus. And here's what he has to say. Being mindfully connected. What do I really mean by that? For me, it's really three things. Compassion for myself and for the people around me. Being mindful about my emotions, my state of being, my feelings and my needs, and of others' feelings and needs. And connecting with myself and with the people around me. Notice that I said myself before others because I truly believe that self-compassion is the key to compassion. If I can't connect with myself, I'm going to have a really hard time connecting with the people around me. So how do I really do this? I take a moment to connect with myself. I have a few mindfulness practices that I do on a day-to-day -day basis. One of my favorites that I want to talk to you guys about is called the inner smile. It's a Taoist practice that, that I learned as a part of my Tai Chi practice. And it focuses on you connecting with yourself by placing your hand on your heart center. The other hand on your tummy. In fact, a belly rub feels really good at this point. And the idea here is to take a deep breath and smile into yourself. I'd like to invite you all to try this with me. Place your hand on your heart, the other hand on your belly. When you were a kid, your mom, your dad, or your caregiver may have rubbed your belly, and you probably felt really good. And in this moment, you're truly with yourself. Take a deep breath and just smile and check in with your body, see how you're feeling. Once we connect with ourselves, I'm hoping that this allowed you to connect with yourself a little bit. Once we connect with ourselves, what we do is we try to connect with the world around us. And for that, I have another practice called NVC, or nonviolent communication. I, I was introduced to NVC about three years ago. And one of the things about it is that you express yourself with clarity and compassion by understanding your own needs and feelings and the needs and feelings of the people you're having a conversation with. Let's look at an example that uh, happened a few years ago. I called my mom, uh, I think after a few days of not talking to her. So I was really excited about this conversation. I wanted to check in on her and see how she's doing. A few minutes into the conversation, she goes, you know what, you haven't called me in a while, and people have been asking about you. You're also really old. We need to get you married. I'm like, Mom, where's this coming from? And she was like, well, you've been irresponsible. You don't take care of yourself. You don't find the person that you can marry. If you cared about me, you would probably do what I say. In this moment, I got really agitated. I was frustrated because I called my mom to check in on her and see how she's doing. And my need for connection was not being met. My need for trust was not being met because my mom just told me that I didn't care about her. And looking back, it's possible that my mom's need for being heard by her son was not being met. And in this process, we both walked away from a conversation completely disconnected. Let's look at another example that happened to me at work. I was in this meeting with my team uh, brainstorming ideas for our project. And I proposed this idea, which was immediately shot down by a team member. And I was really confused at first. I was like, wait, he didn't even listen to the whole conversation. And he just shot it down. And I look back and think, oh, you know what? He does this a lot. So I've already generalized in my head that this person always shoots people down. I'm disconnected. 
and I'm my need for connection and my need to be heard is not being met. Thankfully, I did not say this to that person. I stopped, I took a moment, connected with myself, and realized that my needs are not being met. My feelings of agitation, frustration, are happening because I wanted to be heard, and my idea was shot down. And I also recognized that this person is probably also wanting to be heard. They have a belief system of something failing in the past on similar lines, and so they are abiding by that belief system and recognizing that this is probably already a failure. And they want to be heard this time. And the moment I recognized that we both have unmet needs, it was important for me to reestablish our connection because I was almost on the verge of being disconnected. So I proposed an idea by saying, hey, why don't we listen to each other to understand rather than, than to agree or disagree? Let's take down ideas together and evaluate it in the end, depending on what we think is the better idea. Through the process, we both connected. We, have, we had a bunch of ideas established. And we both walked away from the meeting feeling like we were heard. And life just became more wonderful. So what am I trying to say here? It's basically the fact that by being mindfully connected, I choose how I respond to you, to myself, to my family, and to the people I love. In doing so, I become the author of my own life. I'd like to invite you all to check in with yourself, connect with yourself, understand who you are. Are you being the author of your own life? Do you respond the way you want, or do you react to situations? I invite you all to become the authors of your own journeys by being mindfully connected. Thank you. <laughs> How many of you feel the room is more human than before you, when you walked in? How many of you feel like you've gotten to know each other a little bit more? The people next to you, the people who shared by a show of hands. Well, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> There's 14 other amazing stories on Taffy Hour posters where you can read about your peers from global offices. London, Toronto, New York, Chicago, Carpinteria, name it. To connect this large company, my goal, and I hope that you can continue my legacy after <laughs> my last day, which is today, my internship. Uh, so thank you all for coming today and listening to these amazing speakers. Round of applause.